Hey everyone, this is Dr. Jyoti Bala. I welcome you all on my YouTube channel. I hope you all are doing great. In this session, we will be discussing about top 10 effective tips for troubleshooting PCR and optimizing your PCR reaction. So if you are a student or a researcher from molecular biology, biotech or genetic field, the session would be useful for you. So let's start the session. As we know, PCR is a powerful technique which is used to amplify specific DNA templates which is widely used in molecular biology and biotechnology. PCR has a variety of applications including DNA cloning, gene expression analysis and also in the diagnostic testing. But often many researchers and students face troubles while standardizing and optimizing PCR reaction. I myself has a 15 year experience in molecular biology, especially cancer biology. So I do have experience in running PCR and optimizing PCR for my cloning experiment and also for silics and aptamer technology purpose. So let me share how these tips has helped me during my PhD. If you have any further suggestion, you can also drop your critical feedbacks and your troubleshooting methods in the message so others can also get benefited out of that. See how you can optimize and troubleshoot the PCR. The first is use the right amount of DNA template. Concentration of DNA templates is very important for optimal PCR reaction. The number one requirement is to use a right template and purified template. It should be of free of contamination. The another factor is use of correct primer. Choose your primer that are specific to your target DNA sequences and you should have high melting temperature. You also need to optimize the PCR buffer and enzymes if you are ordering from different companies also. The another factor is magnesium concentration which is also very critical and crucial factor in the PCR reaction. Magnesium concentration can also affect the efficiency of PCR. Thus optimal concentration is always required. If you are using PCR kit, sometimes the buffers is with magnesium and without. So depending on your optimization need, manually you can standardize and optimize the concentration. The another factor which always helped me is uh, working out on the annealing temperature. The annealing temperature should be optimized for specific primer pair use. So depending on your template and primer, the annealing temperature could vary and you can go plus minus to optimize that PCR reaction. If the temperature is too high, the primer may not anneal effectively and if it is too low, the reaction may produce non-specific product. So we have to play in plus and minus and see where you are getting specific bands. The another factor which is very important during PCR reaction is using a correct polymerase for amplification purpose. Usually in a laboratory people use stack polymerase but there is few limitation if you have to use higher cycle number of PCR then the proofreading has limitation over there. So in many uh, cloning scenarios instead of TAC people prefer PFU although the efficiency is low there but the proofreading capability is higher. So depending on your different experiment, the needs and the choices could vary. So you have to work on that part also. You also have to look the quality of your PCR reagents. It should be of high quality. You should also ensure that it is without any contamination for getting the possible best PCR result. The number of PCR cycle can also affect the efficiency of reaction. If you are doing too few cycles, it may yield insufficient amount of the product while too many cycles may lead to the non-specific amplification. So depending on your template, your primer and your PCR reaction, you also have to work on the PCR cycle number. Usually we work around 30 to 35 cycle, but it could vary depending on other scenarios and other experiments also. Like in my DNA asymmetrical PCR we need to run few more cycle numbers there and during aptamer selection round it has to be optimized depending on your different ligand selection round. Last but not the least you also have to use a proper control both positive and negative while performing the PCR so that you can get the ideas what is not working and where is the problem and how we can solve it. I hope you have liked the session and these tips is going to help you in optimizing and standardizing your PCR reaction and while troubleshooting your PCR experiments. I hope you are going to share these information among your scientific endeavors, especially those students who are performing and using PCR in their research and daily experiments. Don't forget to like and subscribe the channel for more such informative content. Thank you so much.